A differential is a mechanism that lets two wheels on the same axle rotate at different speeds. This helps a car go around a turn where the outer wheels must rotate faster than the inner wheels. In this activity, you'll learn how to build a working model differential from a construction toy like Kinex. Before we get started building, let's talk about why we would need a differential. Here I have an axle with two wheels that can rotate independently. When this axle moves in a straight line, the wheels rotate at the same speed, which you can see here by observing the red and blue pieces of tape. When the axle goes around a turn, the outer wheel must cover a greater distance in the same amount of time as the inner wheel. This means that it must rotate faster. Again, you can see that here by closely watching the red and blue pieces of tape. This is fine, for example, if you're pulling a wagon and the axle is not powered. Both of the wheels can just rotate independently. This becomes a problem, however, in a vehicle with a powered axle like a car. Here, both wheels are now fixed to the axle and rotate with it. The axle is driven by a drive shaft which is connected to the engine. So when the gears mesh and the drive shaft spins, the entire axle spins. This creates a problem when the axle turns because the wheels can no longer spin independently. One of them must slip with respect to the ground in order to go around the turn. This is where the differential comes in. The two halves of the axle are connected by a series of gears that allow the wheels to spin at different speeds or even in different directions. However, the entire axle, and therefore both wheels, can still be driven by a single drive shaft, or in the case of this Kinex model, a chain. Turning the chain causes both wheels to spin at the same speed. However, if one wheel starts to slip or encounters resistance and gets stuck, the other wheel can continue spinning at a different speed. Let's take a closer look at how the differential works and how you can build your own. Start by building two adjacent supports for two separate axles. The axles should be aligned but not connected. Place a wheel on the end of each axle. The wheel should be fixed to the axle such that it rotates along with the axle when you spin it. With Kinex, you can do that using these small tan pieces. Here's a close-up showing the wheel connected to the axle so they rotate together. Now let's take a closer look at the end of the axle opposite the wheel and all the pieces you can put on now to save yourself some time later. You're going to need one of these white pieces that is attached to the axle with these tan clips so it rotates with the axle. You're also going to need two of these orange pieces that can spin freely on the axle. You can prevent them from sliding back and forth on the axle using these small spacers and clips. If you would like to add a chain drive to your axle later, then you should replace one of those orange pieces with another white piece that can rotate freely on the axle and connect that to the gear. So let's zoom out again. Here we have our support structure with our two axles that can rotate independently. Each one has a wheel and a bunch of pieces on the inside that we're going to be connecting things to as we build. Let's add a spoke to each one of those white pieces. So I'm going to take this blue piece and clip it in here. I've already done it on the other side. Now, I can rotate both wheels by taking a bar, like this gray piece, and using it to push on the blue pieces simultaneously. You can see that as long as there's an equal amount of resistance on both wheels, they will rotate at the same speed. If one of the wheels gets stuck and I try pushing on this gray bar, it will get stuck on one side, but rotate and continue pushing on the other side. This is the basic concept of a differential. We are now going to build a mechanism that completes that function without me needing to hold on to this gray bar and do it myself. First, I'm going to build a simple support for this gray piece and clip it into these orange pieces that I put on the axle earlier. Now you see that the support and the gray piece can rotate independently of the axle and it can push on both of these blue bars at the same time. However, if I grab onto one wheel so it gets stuck, the other wheel will also stop moving forward because this gray bar can't rotate like it could when I was just holding it by hand. The support is forcing it to remain in this direction. What we need to do is build a mechanism that allows this center bar to rotate. Again, watch what happens if I pop this out and push on both wheels. If one of the wheels gets stuck, I can rotate the bar to continue pushing the other one forward. Here, I've added a support frame that can spin independently of both axles. I'm going to replace that gray bar with a piece like this. Two smaller bars connected by a white piece in the middle with a hole that will serve as a pivot. Now, I've connected that piece to the frame. Again, this entire frame can rotate about both axles 
and this piece can spin about this axis. Let's see what happens when I use this piece to drive the spokes. If there's an equal amount of resistance on both wheels, then they will spin at the same rate. You'll see that the spokes remain aligned with each other. However, if one of the wheels gets stuck, the center piece will continue to rotate, pushing the other spoke forward until they lose contact. Again, that's the same effect I could achieve by pushing on these spokes by hand with this gray bar. If one wheel gets stuck, then I can rotate the bar to keep pushing the other one forward. I've just built a mechanism that does that for me. Now, ideally, we would like to have smooth, continuous motion. Right now, we have the basic concept of a differential working, but once this rotates too far and the spokes lose contact, the axle will stop spinning. We can get around that by adding more spokes. Here I have added eight spokes to each white piece, effectively creating gears. Now, each time two of the spokes lose contact, the next set of spokes will catch, allowing continuous rotation. We now have a working differential. If the amount of resistance on both wheels is the same, they will rotate together. If one of the wheels gets stuck, the gearing mechanism will allow the other wheel to keep rotating. We can make things a little smoother by adding one more gear to the opposite side of the center shaft, giving us four gears total. You should now have a working model differential. Depending on the connects pieces you have available, you could try expanding your model by adding a chain drive as pictured here, a drive shaft with gears that change the direction of rotation of the shaft by 90 degrees, or even a motor. For written instructions that go along with this activity, click the link in the description below this video.